Toby. The ability to dictate the pace of the game. Okay. This is what I'd like to see from Na'Vi. I want to see a rhythm tempo hero over on Dendi. Strong rotations coming out from Artstyle and Seneca, and not just going on passive heroes. I or mean, if they do, display the timing attacks for me. I feel they very much did that in this game that we just saw. They were ahead they did. for the largest part of the game, and then, you know, Secret showed signs of of life every now and then. At that one point, I thought they would win it just because of how their team composition was, and they reached this critical mass point in time where they had the items they needed. But Navi still persevered, and then they took it to late game, where Arsile and Enchantress is forced to be reckoned with. Dendi on the Invoker, still the standout performance to me. And then, of course, the, the setup from General and Sonaiko. It was uh, good stuff. Would you believe that Rider gets through? I mean, do you first pick Invoker? I, uh, no, I, I think um, you first pick the Bat Rider. Honestly. First pick the Bat Rider. Dendi still got well, a lot of options to play. Not still still to have faces for so, so, First pick the Bat Rider doesn't make, make a lot of sense because there's very little risk of team. Let me just finish. There's very little risk of Team Secret picking up the Bat Rider, so they could have just waited with it to the second pick. Mm -hmm. But this way, they don't really reveal much either. And if Team Secret then get their hands on Weeha's Invoker in response, then you have a Bat Rider to deal with it. Or you have an invoker to deal with a bat rider. That works too. And also look at the other supports to go up against up against the bat rider, like easy quick counters that stop the bat rider lasso from being as effective. One hero who we haven't really seen a lot in this tournament, in fact, have we actually seen an all uh, vengeful spirit up is kind of like dropped by the wayside. Yeah, she's gone. Really? Just like that? She's out of You've here. You've thrown her out? I, I've, I've asked. <laughs> Believe me. I've asked, asked around. I was like, so, Vengeful Spirit? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, no. Fa Faceless Void's coming back, no, so sorry. is a VS a good pickup? I mean, against Batrider, though, it, it would actually, I mean, if you're ever going to have the Vengeful Spirit come back in this I patch mean, against a Batrider. So, here is the puppy pick. When, when he bans out Enchantress, that is where you got to ask yourself, do I let Poppy have Chen? Sort of like a dirty hairy question, really. This this is the concern that we're having. We, we were we were almost joking about this before this game began. What was Secret do coming in here to gain number three? Okay, gain number two didn't go your way. Navi actually executed their draft. You then give respect to this. How do you then go around that? You go back to the the tried and tested secret controlled push. Chen is the perfect one to make that happen. Doesn't even have to be a push. The thing is. Bobby is so good on this hero that they can build just about whatever lineup they please and he will take them through the early game at the very least. So, already I favor Secret Scrub. So we're one pick in. <laughs> <laughs> one pick. Chen versus Batrider. All right, wow. Chen, it is. You, you do realize you're going to get mugged on the way home. Like, I even heard this crowd boo when I was just like, you know what, Nami lost. And then well, I'm also a Chen fanboy, so it, it's not even Secret alone, right? So, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sort of interested. Ish. But yeah, again, uh, that's a way of dealing with them picking with spirit. You take it yourself. Well, this time it's not Poppy that has to play it. Or yeah. learn to play it. This is interesting. Actually a hero that we've come to know Pile I play a lot, so... Nato's been still definitely wanting to do what Toby was talking about earlier, and dictating the, the pace of the game, being aggressive, I'm taking all the fights on their, their terms. It's, it's pretty ballsy, though, to pick a bounty hunter up against, like, we've been flagging how great Puppy's Chen is, and also just his presence of mind about... Oh, that's the, that's the whole reason you pick the bounty hunter. Yeah, it's, but it's to put on the pressure on him, take him out of his comfort zone, like, sabotage and cripple him as much as you possibly can, so that he doesn't become the factor that we've come to know as being arguably one of the best, oh, well, the best Chen in the world, slash second best. I, I agree with the mindset, Arthur. but at the same time, I've seen Puppy dodge and evade bounty hunters as well and make it so all they can really do is wait for a courier snipe and yeah. that's all. And it's even better now that there's an additional free camp to, to deal with. So the yeah, bounty hunter could camp. Yep. end up wasting a lot of time, but at the same time it's not just Poppy that this hero puts a lot of pressure on. That's just a, a, a side effect of it. It's still very annoying to play a mid lane against it. It's annoying to be on, on whatever side lane and have to worry about whether or not the bounty hunter will be there because if you're in an even matchup He's gonna make the difference. What about the other tempo controller, though, from Team Secret? He has her spirit. Seconds remaining. Kind of a Team Secret specialty, right? Hmm. What I do mean, you guys think about spirit. that? I'm, I'm still uh, awestruck by the fact that it was 10th. 
the last game, <laughs> and that it even goes through the first seven heroes in this game before it's picked. You know, two bands on each side and three pickups. So, <laughs> again, favoring Team Secret Draft a lot. What else is there that Na'Vi can do to try and combat the Chen? If the bounty doesn't work, what's plan B? Well, Puppy is removing it now. One of them yeah. being the Witch Doctor. Cask, well, that wasn't so much it. I mean, it's good too. It takes away what Na'Vi felt success with in the last game. Yeah. Like, I, I, this is going to be a completely different draft from Na'Vi this time around. So I say that when Void's still in the pool. The, the fact that they leave the Invoker in the pool sort of leads me to believe that they might pick it up themselves, leaving Pilotai with the Earth Spirit. But there's every mid in the pool, like Death Prophet's still in the pool as well, if Team Secret want to combo that up with the Chen. Ten seconds remaining. Like, not just for, obviously, push, but for team fight is going to be beautiful for them. Oh yeah, but it is a Wii Invoker after all. And you just saw what Dendi could actually do on the hero. And for Na'Vi's, like, for Na'Vi's side of things, if you can get the Invoker right now, why not? Are you that worried about Earth Spirit? Ten games? Well, there's your OD. Might cause an issue. OD's a uh, pretty appropriate response going up against. I'm just going to call it right now. Team Secret is going to pick Shadow Demon. Why? St I Stop trying to make that happen. I mean, I mean, it's good That's not going to happen. It's good against Bat Rider. It synergizes amazingly well on all levels with the uh, Outworld Devourer. Puppy is a next level thinker. You two are definitely not. <laughs> I, I have if seen, you guys want to know, one. yeah, go on, Cap. If you guys want to know what kind of next level thinker Jacob Toft Anderson is, he is convinced that Shadow Demon OD is the strongest combo in the world of Dota. I mean, and, I'm, I'm and, saying and, that with a smile on my face. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sure, sure. A bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, because, but it is good though, in theory. <laughs> In, in theory, in, in, you have in, the, in practice, it kind of goes the opposite direction. You have the the disruption and the astral, and then you can fire off tons of poison on top of that. Then you just proc with the aura. It's all good. It's all good. Shadow Demon is never going to run out of mana. He's just going to farm up a storm. He's Your team get... will spend uh, half of the fight in a different dimension. No, no. And then you, he's going to have an Aghanim Scepter, and whoever is astral is dead already when he comes out. It's It's perfect, honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, now you have more incentive, I guess, with the Bane on the other team. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or you could just use the long kicker of Earth Spirit to cancel off Bane script. I'm just gonna draw. Or the OD imprisonment to just be the saving grace. Ten seconds remaining. You guys can leave the stage, and I'll take over the rest of the show. Ah, uh, that's fine with me. That's good. Ten seconds remaining. If he's right, we're, we're never gonna be able to live with him and again. They do it like, uh, I mean, the, the, the words, the words Shadow Demon Core came out of Jacob's mouth once. <laughs> well, not uh, this case. So, <laughs> the, the trend here is also picking the carry as late as humanly possible, which leads me to believe is obviously an OD mid. Yes. With Envy's hero being picked up at the very end. I would be surprised to see Envy play off the OD as well. So, pretty safe to say that it's... Uh, yeah, nope. that, that feels still right. Saving. It's, it's, uh, it seems very likely that they won't pick up the Shadow Demon at this point. <laughs> I would agree with you. Assuming Earth Spirit is being played Is offlane by SD a viable thing? No, I mean, you could play an offlane Earth Spirit, by all means. You could. But unlikely. Who do you even now get a zero offlane now for Team Speaker? No, for Team Secret? Like, how do you do that? Are you, what are you really going up against? Are you going up against a Bane? Is he really going to zone you out of the lane? Five seconds remaining. Or is this actually an Earth Spirit offlaner? I don't think it's half bad. If there's any team that is going to do a bit of off-the-wall lineup, changing around the roles a bit, that one would be used to, it's going to be Team Secret. It would make a lot of sense to get just to hear like a Beastmaster in for Team Secret. Obviously a great hero for Misery, great with dealing with Bane Nightmare, and, well, I actually get half of my wish I asked for in the last draft. Dendi with a good tempo control hero that actually can play to his strengths. Also really nice for Na'Vi to have over on Dyer's side. It's a lot of single target on Na'Vi's side of things, though. Prove problematic running up against... Uh... This dual core situation with OD and Spectre, plus very disruptive hero in, in, um, in Earth Spirit. And I very little to saying. deal with Chen and Na'Vi. All right, well, Na'Vi, they actually took away the Broodmother, but they abandoned the response from Team Secret. That's aimed to counter out both the Bane, Bat Rider, and even the Bounty Hunter track. Yeah, it's, it's very, very appropriate right. offlaner. Are we set on a Bat offlane? 
pretty certain. I think so. I mean, they could, again, they can still run both things, but I think this one is uh, very likely an all-plane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of got to be. Then again, they, I mean, they need we, some survivability, like they need a tank in their lineup. The years time ago, we saw EG run a, a bat on all the time with great success, played on a, on a five position by PVD, so... So wrapping things up for the Navi side, then. It's, we uh, need our five position. Yeah, they need uh, I don't think you can necessarily up. contest Team Secret we need late a here. It's a uh, carry. Who else is really left in there that's good for Navi? I mean, Gyrocopter is a team fighting hero, but... Uh, you won't be able to deal with a Spectre, though. I don't... But you need something aggressive. Uh, well, I'm not necessarily sure it's Gyrocopter, I think, but... I think Clinks is decent. Clinks? Mm -hmm. Going up against the Chen. Could any mage actually Double, work his way into here. this game? Like a quick Manta anti? No, you might as well just uh. give up. <laughs> I think you've got something which could actually use up against the OD, but I was gonna be the gyrocopter. They get a little bit of team fight in there. All right, now you're gonna have to play it pretty fast and loose here. Jacob, Toby, predictions. Chen Earthspirit. Chen or Spirit, that's all you have to say? That's all I have to Team say. Secret just look really good. Like they, got, they, can make, they can create a lot of space and then Envy will just roll in. And he can roll in very early as well with his Spectre. So it looks again like Team Secret have a really good 20 to 25 minute draft. Well, Navi winning game number three and winning this series up against Team Secret would make an excellent headline. A headline that perhaps could show up at the Score Esports. Find it on the app, everything else, check it out. We're gonna go into our game number three with Durka and Blitz. Thank you guys, we are back. Game number three, Na'Vi against Team Secret. And my goodness, Blitz, what a cracker of a match we just saw after game number two. Who would have thought that Na'Vi could have done it again? Against the Shanghai Major Champions, Secret themselves. But does this draft from Na'Vi have it for game number three? I think this is the draft... I don't know, this one has to have a high level of execution. In the last game, it was a lot easier for me personally to see how they were going to win. But this one, it just feels really well balanced by Secret. It feels like late game, they've got things wrapped up. In the mid game, they've got a lot of different ways to win team fights. Na'Vi, they need this bounty hunter to do a lot. And I don't know, this one feels like a little bit of an outdraft from my perspective. Well, General did start his tenure at Na'Vi playing a hell of a lot of Batrider. I think the first sort of 10 matches he played, he played 9 Batrider games, so he's definitely on a comfort hero himself. Eternal Envy Spectre back to the good old mainstay, but I'm looking straight at Puppy Chen. Even if he is against a Seneco Bounty Hunter, who starts things off with some good early warding and a sentry, but he's scouted out because guess who placed that Observer Ward even earlier than him? It's Pile I Die. And Seneco, oh, oh they the see him, they're all... Oh, gonna catch the little bounty, but they've got the dust as well. Pile I die, the Orb of Vendor will slow him down with the Tango Tree. Suneko slowed, but they can't catch. I'm surprised after the miss roll that they still went for that. That felt a little bit risky for no reason, but... Hey, who, ma who cares? Didn't Toby say it didn't matter what Secret drafted? That they were gonna be Na'Vi last game, and it was gonna be easy, and... Na'Vi ended up winning, so... It's all good, man. Three sticky napalm stacks, Suneko four up, and... Bounty looking for stealing oh, he got a it. bounty, he did indeed! That's five stacks! Snatch it away! In general, considering continuing to battle this one out, he's, he's gonna, gonna go for the it. high ground, but Weeha turns, the battle continues under Pylai oh, by Zerspirit. They've, they've got the sticky napalm, a third one will follow, and with a brain sap, damage output from Suneko, it looks like Na'Vi are gonna get your first blood onto the Earth Spirit. Pylai die, no roll, no escape! And our style picks up your first kill. And the crowd goes absolutely wild as Navi. That's a really good starter kill for them, and they use so much invis detection to try to mess with Seneco early on. They've got one dust and one sentry left over from all of this, and they're gonna be pretty displeased with that. Is instead what should have been a first blood for them instead turns around, and Art Style is mid just to mess with Weeha as much as possible. We've got Dendi on. It's Crap. kind of like an Sentry underrated signal. Roll into Seneco, the dust is there as well. Seneco overstays his welcome in the Radiant Jungle. But the question is, do they have the damage to finish him off? He's pretty quick on his feet, he's already got the brown boots up, and he's just running himself away. Another Shadow Walk, and the dust expires, allowing the bounty once again. Inches away from death, 
but still surviving. And that was two heroes that rotate down that definitely don't want to spend this much time on Justin Aiko, who manages to get the Observer Ward down. Puppy doesn't have on the obs of his own. It would take Pilai Die actually rolling up there just to deward it. But looks like Puppy is going to try to make do with what he has so far, which is just going to be the troll creep. And Weeha might want to set up for this. And he does, but not sure what this can lead to. Refraction is still there, and a quick meld from Dendi. 1-1-1, one, 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 not... The most ordinary of builds, but it does allow him to stay online for a little bit longer art style. Capped up by the troll, but Puppy is just playing the nuisance game. Sending these little monsters in to try and annoy Dendi. And in the Puppy Chen, there's some players that just have these signature heroes. Puppy Chen is as old as they come, but... Soneko's done such a good job of trying to isolate him out and forcing him around the map, making inefficient maneuvers. He's got one of these camps warded, the other one he has vision of, so he can always rotate down. And they're doing such a good job of slowing down Wii in this mid lane, giving him as much pressure as possible. As Soneko's out of mana now, but Wii's going to have to pop that salve, and more, more importantly than that, he's out of mana now. Does he consider walking back to base? He's bought a TP, so it looks like that's the plan. And Puppy, sure enough, hits level 2, and he's still only got this Dark Troll. Can't really go anywhere with it, and you look at the CS score, 40 and 8 for Dendi. He's gonna start tripling up, even quadrupling this OD's last hit count soon. Yeah, they're struggling right now in this mid lane, and they just can't really help him. The Earth Spirit could make a rotation, but... They're busy trying to give Eternal Envy some room at this bottom lane, and that's the important thing, is that General got his Batrider, he's able to pressure this spare in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's already level 4 right now, and this is absolutely not what Secret wants to happen right now. So what it comes down to is, can Puppy rotate around the map? One-on-one and... -on -one in the jungle, Suneko against Pilatai, punching and thumping, but Suneko's got General, no longer 1v1, and Pilatai, the roll into Batrider's Firefly, and another kill for Navi on that Earth Spirit. Zaneko has just been the thorn in the side of Secret in this game so far. Three minutes into the game, done so much work for them, popping so many of the wards, and he's already going to go for the suicide just so he can come back to the lane even sooner. But he's done his job in the early game. Forced out a lot of sentries, dust. One... Most importantly, he's been able to get kills. For sure. Now, one lane that we haven't really looked too much at is up at top. Art style Bane, Dichira, Gyrocopter, dealing with this misery of Baden here. He's getting his levels up here and he's definitely annoying the Bane who dropped very low and was forced to Nightmare to retreat. But Abaddon, the panel mentioned, Aquatic Shield's good against that track from Bounty. What else does it give you? Uh, most importantly, if you get stunned up, you can just pop your borrow time and most things will get just removed and you can go for the turnaround. But it's just a really good core where if DRR decides to try to use the Rocket Barrage, it's not going to do too much. Misery can tank a lot of 1v1 fights, which he's been doing so far. They've got the dust again onto Seneko. This oh, time this it might be a kill. A DD Chen. And Seneko pays for his insolence. He does get a sneaky little Observer Ward down, though. Again, watching for these Chen rotations. Does overlap a little bit with the other one, but... Give good vision nonetheless. Yeah, probably the most important thing about that, too, is that he had the most annoying creep to play against, the Purge Creep. If it was any other creep, maybe he can get out again, but that one just makes it a little bit too difficult to run out of. Once he just gets the first purge on you. Oh, stack up some napalms onto a turn. Lenvy, General, Firefly up as well with a dagger across. EE -E has a TP rotation in from the Earth Spirit, but Pilot die will block off the advance and give the Spectre a little more room to maneuver. But again, it's another situation where Team Secret they do lose the battle at the top, but Spectre's forced out of lane. Yeah, they get the kill at top, and again, Seneca with the rotations has died twice, but one of those, if you remember correctly, was just on the Roshan, and he's going to be incredibly satisfied with the amount of impact that he's been able to have. Most importantly, General playing the Batrider has been able to zone out Eternal Envy from a lot of CS, and maybe in the mid game and the late game, Secret have this game, but when it comes to the laning phase, it's definitely all been Navi. <laughs> Oh, Tranquil boots up for General, already exclaiming and doing a little barrel roll as well. On that little bat of his own. And Seneko, once again, cheeky little bugger stealing bounty runes under the very nose of Weeha's OD. 
How many more is he going to be able to get away with, though? You know, the vision game here is super difficult for Team Secret, trying to keep Observer Wards up, trying to buy sentries and dust. Bounty Hunter is not only a drain on their laning phase, creating you know, a bit of a deficit when they have to rotate around and track his movements, but also the just base economical damage, forcing people to buy more than they really would like to. Yeah, and that's the biggest impact that he's having right now, is just... He's making everybody on the map uncomfortable. Secret, they're devoting a lot of these resources that they're building up just to slow him down. And Misery Atop does have the ultimate available. He's going to pop it now. Full health. Back to farm and away he goes. Misery, not going to stick around for too long against Dityra and Seneko. They do have a lot of slows and damages between them. All we are, he's burned all of the mana from Dendi, stealing that intelligence still through the refraction. But just take a look at bottom. Turn Levy needs the babysit. He needs the help. I'll send one back, because the Earth Spirit needs to regen, but Puppy! Usually with Chen's, you know, we see we see them go down one route or the other. They either farm to level 5, get a quick level 6, try and get Arcanes or Mech, or they kind of play the selfless Chen, and throw Wild Wings and Satyrs and those Harpy Creeps to spam on lanes and control things up. Puppy hasn't had the opportunity to do either, so he's stuck in the oh, worst of both out. worlds. They actually smoked under the ward, and this is going to be pretty terrible for them, as they know it's most likely going to either go for the safe oh, lane or the Misery mid. has no ulti up the top of the Spectral Horn, comes through Digira, dropping low, and Misery with the shield! They've got Digira, but does Misery die first? He'll drop straight after the Gyrocopter. It's picked up by EE, so first haunt of the game, and a great start for that Spectre. And then he's going to go for the bottom rune. Nab it, but that was still a smoke from Team Secret, and at this point, I think Dendi should know that the rotation went to top instead. As Seneko's gonna scout this out, should see Pylai die here in a second as well. And he's just trying to soak his level 6 very smartly. Most importantly, General just again continues to get more farm on the map while everybody rotated top. He took this time to farm out some lanes. Oh, hello, Suneko. Do they have reveal? Of course they do. Pylai die with the dust of TPs coming in thick and fast. TA and Bane both want to try and battle through this with Pylai die dropping to the tower. He's got a TP. Oh, Looks he's like got this one. He'll be able to complete. And he's got to be really frustrated at that. Unable to really defend anything and not even getting the counter kill out of that. And now Eternal Envy is getting a pretty reasonable amount of farm as a result of the map movements. Misery swapped out with him and. I guess the trade-off is that General continues to get a lot of farm on the map, and he's going to get his Blink Dagger at a pretty reasonable time, and this is a hero that desperately needs it. At some point, you want him, Dendi, and the Bounty Hunter to just move around. They've got a really strong five-man team if they want it. General is just farming everywhere. You know, he farms bot lane, moves through the Radiant Jungle, picks up a couple of camps, and all of a sudden he's dead. I guess creating or uh, taking up the hole that Dendi left, but... I think that move from Eternal Envy not only did the Horn secure himself a kill, but it took him away from the Batrider who was trying to set up again with the Bane on bot. So things working out for Secret after the initial stages of Bounty Hunters roaming around. How are we looking for Seneko? Level 6, 9.5 minutes in, definitely a stellar start for him. Yeah, they want to try to set up kills around this track as soon as possible. A lot of it just depends on Dityara's timing for when he decides to move down to the safe lane. Hard style, Brain Sap Nightmare. Back behind the tier one, but the nightmare's traded off away from Envy onto Pylite Die. Maybe considering the jump forward with the haunt as well. They're looking for Art Style. They're gonna go for this and commit the haunt. Art Style, not long for this world as Envy picks up one. Back towards mid though. And call down. Astral keeps him alive through the rockets. And Weeha, he's gonna try and keep him alive by Pylite Die. The rocket barrage is tanked up by the Earth Spirit. And we are still not out of dodge just yet. As Suneko and Dendi pair up with a level two Meld Strike. That was a really nice donation by Pylite Die, as Navi are going to clean up with back-to-back -back track kills. What could have just been one, Pylite Die unable to save the OD, and, and they're starting to rack up some gold here. As that's a 1300 gold change off those two heroes, and Secret absolutely cannot afford to just give up those mini skirmishes. That gives you arcane boots on your bounty, head into that mech a little bit faster as well. And then you start to look at the bounty as basically another core hero with the amount of gold he's getting. Well, Dendi, a thousand in the bank. We've seen lots of, uh, you know, in that phase where TA came back a little bit, we saw people transition away from the straight Deso rush into Blink Daggers being picked up. What do you think he wants here is, you know, Blink Daggers, they definitely increase in value the more you have. Do you want Blink Bat and Blink TA? Uh, I think going for the Deso is fine, especially if they opt to go for the early Roshan and use that to kind of take a lot of the map control out of the way. 
I think there's some merit to the blink as well, just because it makes it really hard for Secret to kill him at that point. But just depends on what the bigger objective is. As they can set up a lot of track kills too. As General now has the blink dagger. Gonna TP back to base. Would not be surprised if they immediately try to go for something with the bounty hunter. And they've got a smoke on Soneko's bounty as well. The rest of Team Secret, they're trying to retreat back to their own side of the river. And they've hit level 6 on Chen, so the Hand of God is available for them. I feel like they both just meet over here and go for the smoke. Try to pick up a kill. Yeah, yeah exactly. and that's exactly what they're going to go for. Going for mid is a little bit dodgy just because it's semi-predictable, but Misery is almost an unkillable target. So if they're going to kill Weed, they have to do it fast though, because the Spectre has haunts, and they know that. And... Secret is quite close to this mid lane. Oh man, look at that. Edging forward little by little. Traffic light says red. And General wants it to turn green. And it's going to be Weeha that makes the first move. There's the last one. No, it's not. The Astral keeps it still alive. Oh, the no. Quick doing the roll in on the back pile. It's in the middle with the horn as well. The four man stun with the hand of God. Keep Secret pumping through. And so Neko in a ton of trouble. With the turn, let me clearing up one. Then he at least with Bane clears up another on the back end. But Navi. No mana, no spells, no fight remaining for them. Secret will win this one with a one-for-one -one trade. I think gold lead still goes in favor of Navi, but that could have just been so much better for them as General hesitates for half a second. That's all the time Weeha needs to self-astral himself. Really well played by him as Envy almost instantly responds there. I really thought that was going to go so much worse for Navi for a second as Pylai Dai hit that four-man stun into the Spectre ultimate, but... Luckily for them, they still get out with an okayish trade. Seneca's gonna come in too. They don't want to give up this mid tower for free, but they don't have the glyph. Might not matter what they want. Just throwing out these tracks, but take a look at that. Exactly as the panel said. Iphotic shield taking the tracks up little by little. Misery slowed by Dendi's psionic trap, but actually chasing this one down is reasonably difficult as Eternal Envy's tank is all hell. 4 0 0 at 13 minutes as a Spectre. Earn with the drums and phase already up and running. Yeah, and this has just been a really successful game with him past the laning phase. Oftentimes you see Eternal Envy. They try to do as much as they can to secure his laning phase, but he had to kind of play a little bit more independently, and he's really shined in this elimination game as... I mean, this has to always be on Navi's mind. How much the Spectre's getting, how much the OD's getting. These are both sick late-game heroes. In the mid-game, they do quite well for themselves, too, depending on what build Eternal Envy decides to go for. And at some point, you're going to have to deal with one of the two. They try to make the move on Weeha mid just a little bit too sloppy. They had to commit two of their major ultimates for that, too. And with Weeha having two buddies actually stand behind to try and save him, Pilot Eye will return to base, but Puppy is always ready. 40 seconds until Hand of God is back up to heal up the OD if necessary, but Soneko once more on the advance, looking for the scout, looking for the intel and the knowledge. I think this is part of the issue too, that if you're Navi, you want to try to take out some tier 1 towers, because right now it's so dangerous. In a lot of scenarios, you could maybe go for a kill on Misery if he's playing really far at bottom, but because there's a tier 1 tower available, you know that almost everybody from Secret can respond, especially with the Haunt. And so that's why Secret are just making it a really big point to continue to play aggressively around the map, force things and force the issue as much as they can. I mean, as general, you know, if you see the full force of Secret, all five of them running towards you, and you think, well, I can jump in and pick one and drag them back. It's not that easy. With the shield, the astral, there are many ways that Secret can actually stop and limit his initiation tools. This ball of death. With Eternal Envy able at a moment's notice, like we've already seen with that haunt. Dityara and Artstyle, they're actually a little bit worried about pushing tier 1. Yeah, they want to make sure that whatever fight they go for at this point is kind of a guaranteed one. And Dityara... I don't know, they just don't want to die because the tier 1 is still available. And they've done such a good job of keeping this offlane one up by pushing the enemy one. So they know that Navi just simply can't get there as fast as they can. And they see Dendi at bottom. So top might actually be the coal, the go for them. I think if they just TP one stunner up there, it's a free kill. Eternal Envy, and maybe he feels this one coming. The blink to the back, General. Or the TP. Of the mark and a vein. Nightmares him up. Eternal Envy, Fiends Grip as well with the lasso overlapping everything. The hand of God not going to be enough to keep Eternal Envy alive, but the rest of the secret are back in. Pylai die with Weeha. Shred through the bounty. 
Take out the bat. And I keep the tier one standing. So even though Eternal Envy dies, and there was a track, no, there wasn't. Yeah, that's all in favor of Secret. They didn't lose their tier one tower up. They didn't really have to give up anything. Envy died, but it doesn't cost them too much. Still two heroes for one without the track. And most importantly, you kept your tier one alive. Just continue to get map control, scare Navi into making inefficient trades like that, where they have to dive under towers intentionally to do it. Well, Dendi, he's got his Desolate coming to him, and a DD rune bottles up. And I was just wondering the timing with that, you know, fight up at top. Maybe the TA heads into the Roche pit and utilizes the utilizes the spread of Secret Heroes to her advantage. But it's going to be now that they head into the pit and look for that Roche takedown. And Secret, they are not ready for this. Yeah, this is always the trade though. The top tier two. I think as soon as Secret know that nobody's contesting this, the Roshan's almost guaranteed for them in their minds, but they don't know how low it is. They don't have the best ways to check either. They could use the Haunt for it, but which is exactly what they're going to do. But unfortunately, not going to be able to stop that, but they do manage to get the kill on General. Eternal Envy dropping low. He's going to get sent back to base by the Chen, and it looks like that will succeed as Dendi trapped to slow misery. The Centaurs are here with a call down on the puppy. Chen will be the easy kill for Na'Vi, but will Misery, he's still got his ultimate. Just don't hit him, just don't touch him, don't punch him, leave Misery on low HP, and then shred him to bits with a stick charge with a shield. No, it's not enough. Did you raw with a double kill. Unfortunately, he was able to shield off the track, though which hurts a little bit on the side of the Bounty Hunter, but they were able to parlay the Aegis into quite a lot right there. Is they get two nice pickoffs, and most importantly, they're going to start taking Tier 1 towers, which is exactly what Navi needs to do. We talked about how in the last two games, the Secret, even in a losing effort, what they're really good at is they're dictating the pace of the game, and they're choosing where to fight. In this game, Navi, they kind of have to force the issue at all times and apply pressure to Secret. A turn Lenby has to be a little, a little more sly with his movements, I think he's... Very overzealous, very boisterous with the way he's pushing forward. I, I'm i back. Eternal Envy says he's back. I thought Na'Vi were back. Eternal Envy. Still 2,000 gold in the bank looking for that Radiance, I think. Yeah, it's a really good item just because Na'Vi, it'll cancel a lot of the blinks. Most importantly, you can get on top of the TA, absolutely destroy her. If she decides to go for the BKB eventually, you know, the charges start to get low, your ulti will last longer than that, and once Eternal Envy gets on top of the TA, he just demolishes her. Oh, pile out die. Puppy. These guys have been inseparable for the majority of this game, just roaming around as a pair, and they've been doing reasonably well, keeping the tempo of this game as limited as, you know, you're looking at Batrider with a very early blink. Just judging by that, I think Secret have done well to mitigate how much Na'Vi have been able to apply, especially, you know, looking at Suneko, he could have had that mech a couple of minutes ago, but it's been slowed down, still reasonably good timing, gonna be around 20 minute mark, cause no smoke here for Na'Vi, just gonna group up for a tier one at bottom lane, this does allow, like you were saying, the Spectre to have some free time up at top. Yeah, and they're just trying to bide their time, and if they can get a good fight, Lasso, we are dead, demolished! And even with a two-man stun back from the Earth Spirit, Misery slowed and caught. He's got tracked up, and this might be his demise. And Puppy retreating with the Alpha Wolf actually turning against him. They've jumped on with a mech. The Hand of God is available. He'll have to force it out, but he's not going to use it. Not worth saving his own life. But they allow Misery to escape. They get a lot of track money out of that, though. And Misery is... It's a whatever target for them. Most importantly, they were able to get two kills get the tower out of that one as well. Oh, if they could get God Eternal Envy, this would just be the icing on the cake. Looks like he's out of range. Maybe not for long though, as Ether Lens is done for art style, and that range on, on Nightmare and Fiend's Grip is insane once he has the item running. Yeah, Navi have to continue to push, push the pace though, because we all know what happens when Spectres get Radiance. Eventually the game just kind of gets out of hand. So these opportunities that Navi are creating for themselves, they've got to lead into more and they're going to take down all the tier 1 towers. If they could get another few pickoffs too, this would be excellent for them. They know that Ditya Ra's mid though. Speaking of Ditya Ra, it's kind of interesting looking at his item build. You know, very often we see the Aquila, the drums, just small incremental items, even a magic one. But he skipped over everything to rush into Helm S and Y phase. Just getting these bigger ticket items, knowing that you know fighting and brawling early on maybe isn't the best way to go, but now is their time to strike all into this pinnacle, all into this one moment to shine. With Dendi still having Aegis, Deso Blink available as well. But Secret, 
Just gonna give up these tier twos. Yeah, they desperately don't want to fight before Eternal Envy's Radiance at this point. If anything, what I think the play to do is just allow Weeha to split. Well, speaking of, he's haunting the vision. He's actually jumping forward, looking for the Bat Rider. General Astral. Over on the side, though, it's Sineko that's got the track on the puppy. Paladai rolls in. He's got his ultimate for the cooldown. It's perfect on their heads. Misery pops his ultimate with Puppy. Gone with Pylai Dai and Navi catches Misery on the side. At least we are. Can try and steal some intelligence. No Eclipse available, though. There's no big ulti. Three dead for secret. Looking for four. Navi cleaning up house. Team secret. Ripped apart at the seam, just saying they don't want to fight without their Spectre Radiance, but Blitz, why are they? I think they just thought that was an okay fight because things were split up, but they have to realize Navi is built for these mid-game engagements, and what you just did is gave them four track kills in a row. Maybe it was like two, but still, that's so much gold. He's got a hood coming on the side of uh, Suneko now, and most importantly, he's going to have a way to deal with the, the first Radiant cycle before Envy gets a few levels and the next set of items and that just allows Navi to get, continue to get more aggressive and now Dendi's got a way to deal with you too. He's got the crit coming on him and they want to make this move onto Eternal Envy at top. Oh. They're even going to go for the track. Dude, EE. -E. There's a shuriken here. He's going to have to try and what? Dagger himself into the trees. The trap to slow Eternal Envy. Dagger ready over the tree line and far he doesn't away. Have but he TP. doesn't have a TP for 25 seconds and look at General ready, waiting. He's already found him. Traces him over these treetops and eternal envy. Oh, I mean, he the dropped item the item drop from General, you sneaky little devil. Trying to get him to stop, but that was 3,500 gold on the side of Envy, slowing down his radiance timing even further. And Navi is just feeling it right now. Everything that they're doing is paying off. This is what you want in a team, just to have that kind of confidence to make these kinds of moves and say, guys, we can gather up. We'll take the fights every single time they come at us. Navi, they've got three of the top four net worth. Saneko is really high up there with a full pipe almost completed on him to go along with the mech that he has. He's gonna be incredibly strong against that first Spectre Radiant Cycle like we talked about. Like before, before he gets this item, it might have been what Secret needed to push them over the edge, but now they've got a way to deal with it. I mean, to say, to, to say Navi are riding that morale high, I think is an understatement here. I was talking to the team about a Twitter guy as we came back for game three, and he said they are pumped. You know, the fist pumping, they're screaming, they're shouting, they're all ready for this, and it's showing in game three here. Eight to 18, 24 minutes in. Secret still do have a relatively good mid to late game lineup between the OD Spectre. It's They've just, got ways to sustain. It's this difference right now, though. 15k in net worth, 12,000 in XP. It is going to be hard for them to go high ground safely, but they could just wait for the next Roshan and start to take down tier threes, but Navi. What's scary about playing them and what has always been scary about playing them is they're such an emotional team that you know when they're riding this kind of high, they're going to just play such good Dota. With a BKB on Dithyra, this guy is close to untouchable. The OD not going to be able to do too much against that and a Crystalis for Dendi. Forget BKB, forget defensive items. He just wants raw damage output. And that might actually be Secret's way back into the game. If Dendi doesn't decide to go for at least one defensive item, then maybe they can isolate him out, get rid of his uh, prodigious net worth, and then you can even up the game a little bit. But I think another fight, and then Secret, maybe it's a little bit too much as the track starts to add up. As you see Suneko, he's barely below the Spectre net worth. Insane. Misery's got gloves of haste here, and you know, a Midas maybe drags out the game and allows you to build up into bigger and better things. Oh, they're hunting for E in general, he's found him. Oh, flame break, got ya! Eternal Envy, no TP this time! He's gonna wait for Suneko, get in track range, and Dendi's just gonna clean finish him. Listen to that crowd. Absolutely gorgeous stuff here from Na'Vi, clean, crisp execution. Team Secret, they've got no answer for it so far. I mean, you just look at that one kill. 1,097 gold go the, goes the way of Na'Vi. As easy as that, you know? Daedalus, is that done? They just don't really have ah. the best space craters past the landing phase. Like, the Air Spirit, he's doing a lot in these fights, but Suneko's mech and the pipe is gonna... Uh, kind of make him a little bit worthless in these fights, and... I really like this timing that Na'Vi are gonna hit, even before the Aegis. They know that... The Spectre is still kind of fighting for that Radiance, and that's even more important for Secret than anything. And take a look at the Courier. Dendi did not go for the big damage item finish. He got the crit, 
And now he has the BKB to try and end the game. I think Digiron are nightmare up by his buddy. And Misery turned around on. He's gonna heal himself up, but the ulti's popped. No more damage comes through as Weeha is out of mana completely. So Dendi with that BKB and the blink, this might be the opportunity. They just jump in onto multiple heroes. No, I think Aghanim Sept is being built by General. I think you just back and wait for the next Roshans, which has just managed to come up. You don't want to do anything too over eager. And this is a smart move by them. Just be a little bit calm. They might have overextended a little bit there, and luckily they didn't lose it, Yara. And it just looks like they're going to have to run into the Eternal Envy Radiance, but again, I think Na'Vi's pretty comfortable with that because of the two BKBs that they have and the pipe for the supports. And they're even going to go for this gank at top. Don't think that Secret are ready for this. Pilot is going to make his way over there, but this might be just too quick. Oh, general, force now. He's got it available. The track comes through, but the heal is the Eternal Envy. Stick charge in the hand of God. The turnaround. Pilot die with the ultimate. Zaneko dropping low. And there's Bounty Hunter. Oh, they don't Four have damage for it. His life. You're right, but it did buy time for Roshan to get taken out super smoothly by the rest of Na'Vi. I think that was a little bit too optimistic, especially with Pilot Dai being instantly there, but... I mean, it would have been a sick move if it had worked. That would have delayed uh, Eternal Envy's Radiance, but... Instead, it kind of just feeds it to him as he's handed a hero on... A platter as Na'Vi. They're just gonna wait for Suneko to come back up and start the slow siege. Kira. Butterfly isn't far off, about 1800 gold until he's finished that one up. And now we're looking for art style, you know, kind of uh, an unsung hero so far this game. 8-3, 3, 1 and 5. Not the same kind of enchantress performance we saw, you know, in the previous games where he gets his Dragonlance's Ags and he pumps out this damage. It's just steady, consistent disable and knowing which targets to prioritize. And who do you think our style will be aiming for and gunning for in these team fights. Probably just try to get rid of any of the side heroes. Even sleeping, the Abaddon does quite a lot for you. If you can force him to pop his ultimate earlier than he wants. Uh, going for the Earth Spirit too. For me, it's more just who General decides to go on. If he can get a clean initiation off onto the OD or the Spectre, that'd be ideal for him. And he's going to look for it again as he pops the Firefly, hoping to find anybody out of position. And Puppy is on the low ground. Doesn't look like he's willing to commit for that one. It's probably just doesn't see him. And Eternal Envy is going to make his way top. As Misery is going to be the target here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're never going to pull him out there. That's not happening. I mean, General even sort of stood around considering, should I, should I really go for this? Should I, should I try it? He, he went for it anyway. Put the fear into that Abaddon. Well, for now, up on the high ground, Secret are held. Don't let his Radiance, this will allow him to maybe buy some time for the rest of his team. Farm up these side lanes, split push away, gain and gather both gold and experience. Oh, Problem is, he it. needs another hero to be able to do this. Like, the, the Radiance on the Spectre is sick, but you do need a different damage source other than just the Radiant Spectre. If that's all you're relying on and his ulti doesn't immediately get one hero down on the deck, then Secret is in a really bad position. So Wii's desperately trying to farm out that BKB. Probably doesn't even save for buyback in this case, but it's like they kind of know what's going on as they scattered out the jungle. They don't see anybody on the map. Wii's just hiding there. Now they're drawing a line up. Oh, hello. Oh, so Nako's hello, actually going to find Wii. Hello, What are you up to? Tries to TP out and they've got no stuns. The Shuriken not going to do the damage. Dendi. More than enough. To clean up. I mean, Eternal Envy got a little bit fortunate with the path he took up to the north on top lane. But Na'Vi knew exactly where Weeha was standing. Soneko, that was such a great play by him. Just, he knows that nobody's in that jungle area. And he has to think to himself, okay, Wee's probably not just going to wait inside. This is a decent attempt by me. Let's go for it in general. He's looking for any sort of initiation that he can get. Sans Misery. Well, Seneko burnt down, down to third of his HP, they're playing forward, they've got Puppy, the Chen is caught, but he's popped back out by Misery, the Dichirar, BKB, Gyro, will run around buff on the high ground, and Art Style is trying to hold his own, but for now, Na'Vi, they've breached, this ramp is theirs, the tier 3, ripe for the taking, and Secret, what's their way of clearing through this, they've got limited wave clear, but now it's Earth Spirit, throwing out boulders and rocks, silencing and stopping, Na'Vi from taking too much, yeah, and he's going to lead the charge forward with the OD up. He's going to feel a little bit more confident, but for Secret right now, the name of the game is Delay, Delay, Delay. You never want to get caught into a position where you fight 4v5 anymore in this game. And in some ways, 
that just kind of screws them further because they're going to get behind in gold because they have to stick together. Navi's going to farm out the map during this time, and Spectre is not nearly as scary as she once was for Navi. They've got tons of different ways to deal with her. Difference in net worth alone probably means that they have one fight that they can kind of botch and they'd still be okay. 20k gold and XP is a huge hill to climb. Absolutely massive. The art style even has a glimmer cape to try and save anyone that gets in too much trouble. Yeah, they're just waiting on the BKB for Dendi, I think. Five seconds until that's up and general. Where's your target? Who's the go? We heart Ash draws him up before he gets the jump, so the damage will cancel out the blink of the good timing there. We're gonna get the first. They've got it, pile die, great combo, and the cooldown will whiff across the misery within an inch of his life. And Navi, maybe, gonna have difficulty retreating here. Burnt out, Dendi, drop low, but he's still got PKP and blink and Ages of the Immortal. But oh, until now, it's reclaimed. This might be where Navi back themselves away and think about pressuring multiple lanes at the same time. Yeah, that was really well done by... They just kind of outreactioned the Batrider and without uh, General in that fight, there's almost no chance that Navi's going to go for that. It's unnecessary to risk that 4v5. Your Batrider is 9k of that 20k net worth that you've built up. It's actually gone up to 25 now, but still not worth it at all to risk that unnecessarily. Navi's gonna reset. Unfortunately for them, there's no Aegis, which does make this once again a little bit dangerous for them. And for Secret, that's the window of hope that they need. Maybe Navi decides to overextend right here and they get a little bit anxious or over eager against the OD Spectre lineup. But for them, the rest of Secret's lineup probably isn't too scary anymore. Yeah, Chen Earth Spirit Excel early game. I mean, you're looking at Puppy and thinking Arcane's Mecha there, but Getting into Aghanim Scepter, Force Staff, anything along those lines is going to be relatively difficult for him to actually farm up with so oh, much General of a map. General might just spot the Courier on its way over, as now it's going to cut across, and he's pinging like crazy, but it's going to manage to get the vid booster oh, in time. over the trap. It looks like Na'Vi not going to be able to catch up in time, while Secret... Oh, secret. They, they don't to. want to just lose inside their base. They're going to smoke up for this. Misery's going to get spotted, though. Seneco, he's been stunned up. That's the Earth Spirit ulti pop just for him. The mech is through, but Seneco's dead. Cool down on the back of the puppy. Did you all want to battle through this? He's actually going out one before, but Misery, the Fiend's Grip is there until Misery pops back with a miss coil. The ultimate's down, but he's still going to be able to fight through it. General, oh, he's going to be... Oh! Highlight die shredded by Dendi, and General still alive. Batrider escapes with 100 health. And without that Spectre ultimate, there's almost no chance that Envy wants to take this fight. In all likelihood, gonna mean a set of racks for them as they do have the buyback available on the OD, but after he saw how quickly he went down, I doubt he wants to go for it. Navi riding a high right now. They're immediately gonna go for this bottom one. They figure if the OD was gonna buyback, he would have done it by now. This might actually just force Weeha into the situation where he has to. 20 seconds. I mean, he's got Chen popping back up now. The blink back. Digiral throws the call down. There's going to be no more advance here for Secret. How long until Roshan? We find out in about 35 seconds. That's going to be the next take. And is that the third one, Blitz? Aegis and Cheese? Is yeah, that and that one is going to be incredibly hard to hold because Navi, with the track, just continue to build up this lead. You've got a Satanic now. Onto your Gyrocopter, who went almost immediately for the late game. He's got the damage to back it up. It, it has it has been a while. It's been a while since I've seen a Gyro perform this well. It's kind of been like middling performances. You know, they, they get their S and Y, drums, BKB, all of that, with a lifesteal in between. And it's either game is over one way or another. You know, the, the game ends because Gyro was so stacked, or the game ends because he didn't get those items fast enough. But did you raw? This is an insane amount of farm at this point. 22k net worth, 35 minutes in, he is... You know, five slotted, close to six. Yeah, for me, the true stars of this game, though, it really just boils down to Seneco and General. Just what he's been able to do. There have been a few times where he's been out-reflexed, but for the most part, the amount of jumps that he's been able to have to create chaos on the side of Secret, it's been pretty absurd, but Secret, they are putting every egg into their basket on Eternal Envy. Is He's desperately trying to just get whatever items he can. He knows that the haunts, it's all that matters for them. As once it's down, the 1500 HP hero just isn't going to be able to do it. Are we looking at an axe upgrade for Misery? Ogre Club is there. Might just be the way to go. 2600 gold saved up. Unless it's a BKB for him. Uh, I think 
It's probably going to be the Axe. I'd like it to be the Axe. I don't think the BKB accomplishes as much as he'd want. And right now, Navi are just hoping they can get individual pickoffs to extend their lead and keep Secret inside their base, but they're really hoping for is just wait for the Aegis. And now you've got the fully completed MKB, so the Radiance Burn not going to do nearly as much against Dendi. Dendi pretty much is 6 slotted at this point. So, Aegis and Cheese, if Dendi can't pick one of these up, you're looking at Dichira taking one, and maybe Batrider taking the other. Yeah, I think that's how it would go. I feel like Dendi's items are all pretty necessary. Yeah. Especially that Blink Dagger. Need that mobility in these team fights. Well, General, Aghanims has picked up a while ago. It's, uh, it's been a hit or miss item for me. You know, I've... It took it, it was a long time until I saw Aghanim set the Batrider really pay off and land a couple of these big two-man lassos. But general in these scenarios, you know, when you've got when you've got Puppy Chen, when you've got this Earth Spirit kind of lagging in the back of the team fights, you can jump in onto them and grab them both. It's huge for them. Right now, Navi, they're just posturing. They've got nothing really to farm out. They're just farming out whatever they can in their jungle and their ancients. But again. Name of the game is just wait for the Aegis and Cheese and Secret. They've got a hard decision to make right now. They can decide to leave their base, try to get some sort of engagement off near the Roshan pit. If they don't feel like they can hold against the Aegis and Cheese, because they definitely don't want to lose a second set of racks. At that point, Navi can just siege as long as they want. For sure. Well, I'll turn Lenvi after the Manta. 900 gold saved up. I guess he's going to be just looking to tank up as much as he can. A heart, butterfly, things along those lines get as much sustainability up against Na'Vi's right-click physical attack damage heroes between Gyro and TA who walk themselves into the pit and Dendi drops his Desolator. So it looks like it's going to be him taking one and Dichira taking the other. So cheese for Gyro and Aegis for your Templar Assassin. Yeah, he's going to grab the Eastern as well, make his way bottom. Good news for Team Secret is that they still have the Glyph available. Bad news is that nobody is getting farm right now on the side of Secret, with the exception of Eternal Envy. If you look at the two supports, they barely add up to 9.5k. And this is going to be a rough hill for them to climb. Last chance Saloon possibly here for Secret as their high ground. This is their home. And Big Bad Wolf is coming to blow it all down as Dendi. Splashes through the creeps, a little bit of a nuke for the general. Blink forward, cancelled out by the stun. Now the as well, pick general. Him off here. If he can get finished off, the full step back for the turn of the clip. Clear through him with Dijirar popping his BKB. Not being touched by that big AoE ult. And Eternal Envy's actually held onto the haunt, so they could look for the re-engage. Oh, they can look for the chase. There's Astral there, but the Fiend's been back on the Weehive. They can just pump out some damage. Dijirar comes in for the side, but then he pops his BKB. The haunt, Eternal Envy tries for us, style for the Glimmer Cape. Keeps him at arm's reach. But Na'Vi not breaching barracks here. Tier 3 is all they've taken so far. They still do have Aegis and Cheese though, Blitz. And maybe even the strength to take another lane. Yeah, without the haunt available, Eternal Envy's effectiveness really decreases in these fights. But DRR's getting pretty low. Half HP, that's a double up, so maybe we are both shredded! Dendi clears through two, and Puppy Chase back behind tier fours! Dendi clears up his brother and he's gone, he's done for! No buybacks for Secret, another lane of racks for Na'Vi! 40 minutes in, 12 to 27, and Nato's Vincere looking for tier fours and looking for throne! Honestly, all that's left now is for Secret to just, they've lost. They're just processing it right now as Na'Vi, they're about to complete the upset as they still hold on to the Aegis and Cheese. Na'Vi! In a best... For the last fight, but it's just not going to be enough. In a best of three! Against, against Team Secret! Na'Vi are back, ladies and gentlemen! Na'Vi are back! And that was one of the crispest, cleanest executions from Na'Vi I have seen in close to